music of working together. Different sounds, different flavors. My interest in music has led me to San Francisco, where I got the chance to meet people sharing another passion, passion for food. So let me take you to La Folie. La Folie is French for madness, craziness, folly, and in many ways it's much more than a theme that we have in the dining room with the puppets. The establishment is run mostly by Roland and his brother George, sommelier, and there is no uh, corporate sense of organization. It's all pretty much directed by either of those two persons. Years ago when I came to the United States in 1976, uh, raspberry were testing like nothing, more like water. There was no small green beans, no haricot vert. The same thing will happen to wine really here in the United States. It's happening to farming, especially specialty farming for small vegetables. Chef Roland Passot and his sous chef John Pauly taught me the hard work of expediting. When I started at La Folie two and a half years ago, I had no clue of all the timing involved with uh, cooking. I had been a waiter and runner before, but I hadn't worked as an essential part of the kitchen team. They taught me attention to detail, their perfectionism, and uh, as an expediter you have to synchronize every single uh, member of the kitchen. So we have a very small kitchen and there's about 12 people working at their very best and it's a very labor-intensive food that we're producing at a very fast pace, especially on Fridays and Saturdays, the big nights when we have to put up the big show. So I have felt sometimes like the conductor of an orchestra getting my virtuoso to play and I've also felt many times that we were aboard a crazy ship on a stormy night, especially Fridays, Saturdays, and um, all hands have to come on deck and eventually quiet comes back. But uh, this is part of why I understand La Folie, you know, as a, as a crazy ship. It's called La Folie Comedy Club. <laughs> Why were your Benoit here? Uh, he was working in that famous comedy club, down the walk, and we decided, you know, without him, you know, it would not be complete. So, so he got himself a bozo glass. He shows up. Started like that. <laughs> The simplicity of the food being the star of the dish is the ingredients, the main ingredients, you know. By example, you know, if you do a lobster, you know, you want to test the lobster. If you do something with uh, rabbits, you really want to make sure that you test all the flavor of the rabbit and they're not hidden by a strong sauce who suddenly... So it's very important then to focus on that and, uh, and a lot of time it's based on having three or four ingredients on the plate and not more than that and really uh, again focus on that main ingredient and then the marriage of those ingredients. Little oxtail, then we put on the sturgeons. So we put them on the polenta gâteau, and with a little bit of uh, oxtail juice. So uh, those are wrapped in cold fat. So the oxtail is braised, and then the meat is wrapped in yeah, little cold fat. Maybe some people don't really understand the, the role of an expediter, but it's a very, very important role uh, the expediter. This, this individual is the one, for all practical purposes, responsible for controlling the pace of the kitchen. 
He's responsible for making sure that everything's coordinated. If chef's got some uh, uh, foie gras sauce in the window and it's with five cold items, he's wasted his time. And this, the, you know, the expider is a very important person to make sure everybody's, you know, working together. And it, it's, it's uh, organized chaos. Once he realized that uh, he was part of our team, part of our, our, our family in the kitchen, that he started expediting to take care of us, make sure we all got what we needed, all the information we needed. It's when he started clicking with us. And, uh, and he understands that he's there to help us, you know, get the food out, get it out right. Make sure the customers get the stuff out in a, in a timely manner, and uh, he's become a very important role uh, part of the kitchen. And uh, it's going to be a really sad thing to to see him go. But uh, that's 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 the way it is. We get we get a new expediter. It's tough for a long time. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Where is that microwave? Quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take the rice back here, and I give back here. Dishes, you know, I mean, um, we were talking about the rabbit. The rabbit is something, you know, I mean, when uh, uh, it, it's where, as a chef and as a cook, you know, you get really uh, two different ways of cooking the rabbit because you get the, the roasted of the loin. And I want it, you know, I like my, my food to still be very visual. So it was important to me that it would look good. So in my mind, I said, okay, you know, I'm going to use that rabbit. Here I have my old rabbit like this. And I'm doing, going to clean it in a way that it'll be easy for the customer to eat it. Fill up, I mean, stuff it with spinach and carrots and garlic. And I even use the kidneys of the rabbit inside the loin, where I just cut and put in the middle. And uh, then the leg is stuffed with one mushroom. It's roasted then braised. So the braising, you know, takes a lot longer takes about, for a leg of rabbit, about 45 minutes. So it's all those different flavors. You test the rabbit, but you have one with roasted and still very juicy. The other one, it's kind of uh, melting in your mouth because it's filling off the bones because that been braised, has been first roasted and braised into the sauce. It's on top of tiny baby vegetables. Uh, we are just uh, sauté with a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. We call it a glaze because we put a touch of sugar in it. So it has uh, that, shiny, that shiny thing, that shiny look. It's, it just comes naturally in my mind, those things, you know. It's like if we do the lamb, you know, I mean, like the lamb we have right now on the menu, you know, it's with, you know, braised. Beans. I mean, we in the winter time, so we use flageolet with a French bean. We use also coco blanc with a French bean. But my wife is from Texas, so we use black IP. So uh, a lot of time I try also to not just stay very French in my mind, but also being able to use local ingredients that I can find here in California or in the United States. So it's very important to me. And it's, uh, it's very important that the team connect with each other. Uh, and if there is one element who doesn't connect, then the flow uh, of the energy in the kitchen or in the dining room doesn't work the same way. So it's very important that everybody is connected.
Thank <laughs> you.